Hi everybody! Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about solving one-step equations, but we're not going to solve them algebraically this time, we're going to solve them graphically. So it's just another way that you can look at solving, uh, and it's a technique that we can use for solving equations that will help you um, through even through calculus. Alright, let's get started. So this video assumes that you have some background knowledge about uh, solving equations, because I'm going to be referencing certain skills that you should already have. And uh, if you want to build up some of those background skills, then go check out these related videos that I have, like solving one-step equations, graphing by making a table, and this video called what is a function. So that when I say these things, it makes more sense. Okay, so let's have a look at, uh, I have two examples for you today. Let's look at example one. We want to solve this one-step equation, 2x equals 6. So first of all, the word solve, what it means is find the value of the variable that makes the statement true. So in this equation, I already know that 3 is the value of the variable that makes the statement true. If I multiply 2 times 3, I get 6, and the statement is true, 6 equals 6, right? But I'm not really so interested in a solution in this, uh, in this lesson. What I'm interested in is the method that we can use to get to a solution. And the method that we're going to use is graphing. So here is a way that you could visualize an equation. You can visualize an equation as the equality of two relations. So for example, here on the left-hand side of this equation, we have this relation 2x, which is also a function. So we have this, uh, this function 2x. You can think of this, if you want to, as y is equal to 2x. Okay, now the value of y is going to be changing depending on what value you put for x. So for example, if you put uh, the value 0 for x, then y equals 0, because 2 times 0 equals 0, right? And uh, this kind of relates to this uh, video that I have graphing by making a table. So if you think of the function uh, y, y equals 2x, and you wanted to make a table of that, it would look something like this. Suppose I pick negative 1 for x. Well, then y would be equal to 2 times negative 1, which is equal to negative 2. And that place on this coordinate plane, negative 1, negative 2, is right there, right? And if you have any trouble locating the points on a coordinate plane, go check out the video that says locating points on a coordinate plane, all right? Now, if you choose uh, the value of x to be 0, then we have 2 times 0, that equals 0, right? So with this uh, function here, y equals 2x, it goes through these two points right here. So it's going to start looking something like this. It's a line. It makes a line, it's a linear function. If we let's choose a few more points. So if x equals one, then we have uh, two times one, which is equal to two. So the point one two is here. And finally, if we choose two, then we have two times two, which is equal to four. And we have the point two four, which is one two three four right there. So the left hand side of this equation which we're just viewing, we're choosing to view as, a, as the function y equals 2x, looks like this. It makes a line that's going through the origin. The origin is the point 0, 0. We call, we call that point the origin. And this is, what the, this is a picture of the left-hand side of this equation. Now let's look at the right-hand side of the equation. The right-hand side of the equation is a constant. It's just 6. So a way that you can uh, view this if you want to, you could just think of this as y equals 6. So in other words, the right-hand side of this equation always equals 6. No matter what value you choose for x, the right-hand side is constant, so this value is 6. And the way that that looks, if you graph y equals 6 on the coordinate plane, the way that looks is it's a horizontal line passing through uh, 6, where every point on the line has the y-coordinate of 6. So it would look like this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You have a horizontal line passing through 6 like that. Oops. Okay. And now the place where these two lines intersect each other, that's where they are equal to each other. So where would 2x equal 6? Well, this line represents 2x, right? This is y equals 2x. There we go. And this line represents y equals 6. So where is 2x equal to 6? Right there. Okay? And when you're solving, when you're trying to find the value of the variable that makes the statement true, what we're asking is, what value of x makes this statement true? Well, to answer that question, what is the value of x at this point right here? To find that, you can just look at where this is on the horizontal axis, and we find out that the value of x 
at this intersection point is three. Just like we suspected from the beginning, two times three is equal to six. So this point right here is the point three, six. In other words, when you substitute a three for x into this left-hand side of the equation here, what you get out is six, which is exactly what you want to make the statement true, okay? So what we just developed is if you graph the left-hand side of the equation, you graph the right-hand side of the equation, you find an intersection point, that value of the variable is the value of the variable that makes the statement true. We solved it by graphing. All right, let's look at one more example. So in this example, we have uh, x minus 2 equals 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the left-hand side of this equation, y equals x minus 2. And you could graph that uh, by making a table, or you could, uh, you could realize that hey, that equation is in slope-intercept form, so it's going to make a line, and we can graph the equation like this, y-intercept of negative 2, slope of 1, so that would be looking like this. Let's see if, how uh, straight my line comes out here. Okay. So the left-hand side of the, of the equation is making a line that looks like this. Ah, kind of missed my point there a little bit. It's okay. All right. And the right-hand side of my equation is just a constant, so y equals 3, which we found out in the last problem is just a horizontal line passing through the, uh, through the y-axis at 3. So horizontal line, so this is y equals 3, this one is y equals x minus 2, and the place where these two functions intersect each other is the place where we'll find the value of the variable that makes the statement true. So that is right here at this x value, right? This is the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3. And if we just kind of like check to make sure that we're getting that right, what this point says is that if we input the value of 5 into this function right here, or into this function right here, y equals uh, x minus 2, then what will come out is 3. And that's exactly what we want to come out if we're solving this equation. We want to find the value of x that we can substitute in here so that this function will give us the value of 3. And we found out that that value is 5. So that's our solution right there, x equals 5. That's the value of the variable that makes the statement true. Okay, now we'll, in some other videos, we can look at some other applications and we'll, we can try and solve some more complicated statements using this technique, but you'll find that it's, uh, it's a valuable technique that'll take you all the way through calculus and, uh, and help you to solve some of those statements that can't even be solved algebraically. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.